Order, order. I will call Sarah Dyke to move the motion and will then call the minister to, minister to respond. There will not be the opportunity for the member in charge to wind up, as is the convention for 30-minute 30, 30 debates. Order, order. Sarah Dyke to move the motion. In Somerset. Uh, Miss Sefford, I do apologise. I'm slightly out of breath. Um, but uh, it is an honour to serve with you in the chair today. Uh, and before I start, I'd like to draw my fellow members' attention to my register of interests as a sitting Somerset councillor. The current SEND system is broken. Those with experience all report that it is far too adversarial, pitting families against councils and schools. The recent ISOS report, in partnership with the County Councils Network, and the LGA found that all stakeholders are acting res reasonably but are being failed by the system. So it's important to set out why the system is broken and the challenges that it faces. More children are being identified as having SEND than ever before. In January 2022, 14,000 children in Somerset were identified as having SEND. 4,000 of these children had EHCPs and the other 10,000 had some form of SEND support. But Somerset is far from unique. SEND numbers have risen nationally. Since reforms to the system under the Children's and Families Act 2014, the number of EHCPs has risen by 140%. There have also been more children who have had their needs left unmet in mainstream educational settings, which places more emphasis on specialist schools. Between 2014-15 and 2023-24, there has been a 60% increase in SEND placements in state-funded schools. Somerset Council officials have told me that the linchpin for the system failing has been the inability of mainstream education to cope with the sheer increase in demand within such a short period of time. The reality is that under the previous Conservative government, schools and councils have faced a huge real-term cut in funding. Undoubtedly, this has had a negative impact on the provision mainstream schools can provide. The reliance on independent specialist schools has also increased pressure on councils. Somerset Council funding for children with EHCPs in mainstream settings is around £12 million a year, and despite having a quarter of as many children in independent schools, the cost is more than double this. In addition, costs the council over £30 million per year. The difference in expenditure between children with EHCPs in independent schools and those in state funded is vast. A typical child assessed as band three in a mainstream school will get £13,359 of total funding, whereas an independent school place can cost up to £100,000, plus £50,000 in transport costs. That's more than ten times what another child with similar needs in mainstream school is getting. So this brings me on to another element of failure. Even though the government is investing more than ever on SEND provision, it is still significantly less than the actual spend from local authorities. Government funding in high-needs block allocation has risen from £4.8 billion in 2014 15 to £9.2 billion in 24 25 But analysis has shown that the actual figure for high-needs spending by local authorities is £190 million pounds more in 2023-24 and could rise to over £1 billion pounds over the next two years. Somerset Council's high needs forecast was evaluated by Newton Europe, who concluded that by 27-28, the council would be carrying a formal deficit of £160 million. Pounds. The statutory override on these debts mean that they are kept off the books but half of council leaders surveyed recently said that they would be insolvent in three years if this was removed. The funding was, it is also unequal across the country, leading to a postcode lottery in provision. Somerset Council is part of the F40 group of the poorest funded councils in the country. 
So, Mr Efford, Somerset Council receives less than £8,000 gross dedicated grant funding per mainstream pupil in 2024-2025. So this is over £5,000 less than the best funded local authority in England, illustrating a massive disparity. Rural areas such as Somerset also face huge costs in home to school transport due to the sheer size of the county. The average cost to Somerset Council of this transport for a child with SEND is £10,000 per year, while some individual transport arrangement costs the council over £60,000 a year. Despite this investment and support, the outcomes for children with SEND have failed to improve over the last decade since the reforms in 2014. Now, I'm inundated with casework from desperate parents who are at breaking point over their child being unable to receive the education that they deserve. One parent from Wincanton told me that their bright, intelligent child deserves to be cared for rather than being ignored by the system following what was a harrowing experience. Even though their child has gone through SEND, the SEND system, and has a placement in a specialist school, their needs are still not being met properly. So to summarise, there is more demand than ever before. The system is costing more than ever before, but it is failing to deliver for some of the country's most vulnerable children. Mr Efford, I would like to turn my attention um, to a consequence of failure of SEND services in Somerset. There are about 2,000 children in Somerset receiving a home education. When speaking with the council, they believe that while some of these children are receiving a home education for an entirely legitimate reason, many are being forced into home school as their child couldn't cope in school. These issues arising from a forced home education are twofold. When a child moves to receive education at a place other than a school, they are automatically deleted from the school role, resulting in the council being unable to receive the dedicated grant funding for that child. Somerset Council estimates that this is costing the education system between eight and ten million pounds a year. It's almost impossible to retrieve this money back to create space for the child in the system once they are off-rolled. This essentially then creates a one-way exit um, from the system unless an EHCP is granted for the child at some point in the future. And in any case, if, uh, it would be a very slow and arduous process. We know, because we know that nearly half of the cases of EHCPs take longer than the 20-week statutory period to be granted anyway. The tribunal system is far too traumatic and stressful for parents. And while 98% of, case, of tribunal cases finds in the parents' favour, it does not change the reality that councils are struggling to provide sufficient and appropriate services. For parents who don't know how to navigate the tribunal process, it can, even be, it can be even more turbulent for them and their child. Somerset is struggling with this issue more so than in many other places across the country. Somerset has the third highest rate of school exclusions and second highest rate of suspensions in England for children with SEND. These exclusions and suspensions are primarily um, for persistent disruptive behaviour and even where a child has not been identified uh, with SEND, it has often subsequently been discovered that there is an undiagnosed need. So this leaves them excluded from the system and fighting for a diagnosis and an EHCP in order to get back to school where they should be and receive the education that they deserve. Now, it's not surprising to learn that this is also having a detrimental impact on parents. There are around 60,000 economically inactive adults in Somerset, and the council has reason to believe that at least some of these people have been forced to give up work as they are caring for their child at home. Mr Efford, we can often forget the important childcare aspect of education. The impact of a breakdown of a child's education can have a wide range of consequences. And sadly, in some cases, this can lead to a family breakdown. 
Now, I believe that we need to undertake work on a national level um, to get to grips with the scale of this problem. Now, I know that the government are proposing a register of children not in school to understand the issues better, but we still need to create better routes to get children back into school. Somerset Council is supporting efforts to bring in a more flexible education system that would work to support children at home and rebuild their ability to enter the system. Yes, of course. Thank you. And Mr Chairman, can I first of all uh, thank my friend for bringing this debate to Westminster Hall. I've only been uh, the member for Bridgewater for two months and already I have many letters from parents concerned that the system in Somerset for SEND. And it is clear that the system is too adversarial and it's clear that it isn't working correctly. And I support her plea for Somerset to be more generously funded. Not more than others, but to be brought up to the average of the country. The the speech. Yes. So I was just wondering, uh, Mr Chairman, whether she agreed with me that the most pressing problem are delays in the system, particularly in making decisions. Delays to create an ECH pl EHC plan and also delays in assessing what the contents of that plan would be. Thank you. Sarah Dyke. I uh, thank the Honourable Member for his intervention. Um, correct. The, we, we know, as I've already said, that there are significant delays in uh, children receiving their EHCP. So I would call on the government to speed up that process because, as I've said, the most important thing is for our children to receive the education that they deserve, get them in school where they should be to have the best possible education. So as um, I was saying, Somerset Council is supporting efforts to bring in a more flexible education system that would work to support children at home and rebuild their ability to enter the system, but they need national support. This flexible approach involves taking a more compassionate actions to put children's needs at the forefront and su will support them in their journey back into mainstream education. Now, the Liberal Democrats want to support this work by creating a national body for SEND, which would fund support for those with the very highest needs. A national body would also support services to identify where early interventions are needed in order to lower future costs when needs are so often exacerbated due to inaction. We must also look at other solutions and reforms that can make the system more efficient. Somerset Council are utilising the funding that they have and equalising funding between mainstream and specialist schools. But currently, mainstream schools get a third less money than specialist schools. Somerset Council believes that by spending the money in a smarter way, they can improve mainstream provision and create better opportunities for children. The new government have pledged to take a community approach to SEND, and I await further details of what this will look like. So aside from the Children's Wellbeing Bill, there was little mention of SEND in the King's speech. The government has pledged to put children at the heart of education and children's services with this bill. But in order to make real change, we must put early interventions in place and create support within the mainstream system to reduce costs and the demand for specialist schools. I also believe that part of the solution is to give local authorities with responsibility for education the powers and resources to act as strategic education authorities for their area, including responsibility for places, places planning, exclusions, administering, administrations and SEND functions. The importance of these issues cannot be overstated. And this uh, is evidence that by, by the three debates on SEND, um, that are happening in this place um, this week alone. Now, I've spoken about this issue, uh, the issues that are specific to Somerset, but this crisis affects children and families across the country. We simply cannot let it go on any longer, and delays in action and reform will cost those with the sense, within the SEND system 
and will increase the cost of the public per to the public purse as the finances needed to fix the system will just carry on increasing over time. So, Mr Efford, I would like to hear more details from the Minister on how they are looking to resolve these issues embedded in the system and support the nation's children secure the education that they deserve. Thank you. The question is that the House has considered SEND services in Somerset. Call the Minister to respond. Thank you, uh, Mr Efford, and um, it's a pleasure to serve under you as Chair, and I congratulate the Honourable Member for Glastonbury and Somerton on securing a debate on this incredibly important subject, and she is right, there are three such uh, debates scheduled for this week, which shows how important and pressing this matter is. I know she has, and she has expressed today in her comments, her keen interest in special educational needs and disability, and her strong advocacy for the children and families in her constituency. She, she described the SEND system as broken, and I agree. Um, and she made some very thoughtful comments on how we can seek to address some of the current challenges, which I will come on to address. As a government that is committed to breaking down barriers to opportunity and giving every child the best start in life, we know this means ensuring all children and young people, including those with special educational needs and disabilities, receive the right support to succeed in their education and lead happy, healthy and productive lives. There are over 1.6 million children and young people in England who have special educational needs. And we know that for far too long, too many families have been let down by a system that is not working. The former Secretary of State for Education said the system was lose, lose, lose. And she was right. For years, the Conservatives knew the system wasn't working, but they left families to be failed. And despite high needs funding for children and young people with complex special educational needs and disabilities rising to higher and higher levels, confidence in the SEND system is low. Tribunal rates are rising, as she described, and there are increasingly long waits for support. Far too many children with special educational needs fall behind their peers and do not reach the expected levels in fundamental reading, writing and math skills. And just one in four special educational needs pupils achieve expected standards at the end of primary school. Families are struggling to get their child the support they need and more importantly deserve and this must change. After years in which parents have been frustrated by empty promises and by reform programmes that have been delayed time and time again, this government will be honest with families. We are utterly committed to improving inclusivity and expertise in mainstream schools, as the Honourable Member has highlighted, um, is an important part of solving this issue, as well as ensuring that special schools can cater to those with the most complex needs. We are determined to restore parents' trust that their child will get the support they need to flourish. And we know that effective early identification and intervention can reduce the impact that a special educational need or disability may have in the long term. And that's why in July, we announced that funding, funded support for 11,100 schools registered to the Nuffield Early Language Intervention Programme would continue in year 24-25. And it will help pupils who need that extra support with their speech and language development to find their voice. But there are no quick fixes for these deep-rooted issues. After 14 years, I can scarcely see a system as broken, one in such desperate need of reform, one that is so important that we fix. But let me be clear, we have started this work already. Fixing our SEND system will be a priority for this department, but it'll take time. A decade of national renewal is what we must deliver to give every child the best start, one that they deserve. And, but the government cannot do it alone. We will work with the sector as essential and valued partners to ensure our approach is fully planned and delivered with parents, schools and councils and the expert staff that go above and beyond to help children. And we're acting as quickly as we can to respond to the cost pressures in the SEND system, which we know 
are causing real financial problems in some local authorities, including in Somerset. Before the parliamentary recess, we announced a new core schools budget grant, which will provide special and alternative provision schools with over £140 million of extra funding this financial year, 24 to 25, to help with the extra costs of this year's Teachers Pay Award and the outcome of the increased negotiations for support staff. And this is in addition to high needs funding allocations for children and young people with complex special educational needs and disabilities. And the existing teachers pay and pension grants which total 10.75 billion pounds this year. The Department for Education budgets for 25 to 26 haven't yet been decided. And how much high needs funding is distributed to local authority schools and colleges next year will depend on the outcome of the first stage of the government spending review, which is due to be announced at the end of October. And it means that next year's allocations of high needs funding to local authorities haven't been published in the normal timescale. But we are working across government and we will announce next year's funding allocation for Somerset and all other local authorities as soon as we can. We are acutely aware, not only of the financial pressures that local authorities are facing because of the increasing cost of supporting young people and children with complex needs, but also the financial pressures the government as a whole is facing because of the economic climate that we have inherited. And resolving these problems, as I've said, will not be quick or easy. And I'm keen that we develop long-term solutions, which I welcome contributions from across the House and on from, on, from the Honourable Lady today on these very important issues. It's important that there is a fair education funding system that directs funding to where it is needed and where it can best support. One aspect of that is the national funding formula that's used to allocate the high needs funding to local authorities. So we will take time to consider whether making changes to the formula and we will consider the impacts of any such changes on local authorities, including on Somerset. Every young person with special educational needs or disabilities should have access to high quality services. And local authorities are critical in ensuring children and their families can access the support they need. Ofsted and the Care Quality Commission jointly inspect local authority send provision to ensure there is joint up support for children and young people. The inspections enable the department to intervene in cases of significant concern and to work with local authorities and professional advisors to address areas of weakness. So we welcome the publication of the Big Listen response today. We will work with Ofsted to consider how outcomes for children with special educational needs and disabilities or in alternative provision are better reflected in the educational inspection and the area send inspection frameworks going forward. I'm concerned that a joint local area inspection of Somerset send services undertaken by Ofsted and the Care Quality Commission in March 2020 identified nine significant areas of weakness. And following actions taken, the CQC has subsequently confirmed that seven of the nine areas have made sufficient progress and were therefore stepped down. Somerset were required to produce an accelerated progress plan to address the two remaining areas. And progress against the plan is being closely monitored by officials from the Department for Education and NHS England. The department has implemented a support program in Somerset, which included workshops and support focused on the importance of the data in joint commissioning. Somerset has drawn on the specialist advice of a SEND advisor, who the department commissioned earlier this year. Somerset also receives ongoing support and challenge from the department and NHS England at six monthly accelerated, uh, accelerated progress plan meetings. And the combined impact of these interventions has shown improvements over the last three years. We want, as the Honourable Lady also expressed, a desire, a holistic approach to school place planning, which considers how mainstream settings can offer high quality support to children and young people with SEND, alongside sufficient special school places for those with the most complex needs. Local authorities are able to use their high needs capital funding allocations to deliver new places in mainstream and special schools, as well as other specialist settings. And it will also be used to improve the suitability and accessibility of existing buildings. Somerset Council, for example, has been allocated just under £20 million in high needs capital funding between 22 and 25. A new special free school, Hillview School, opened this month in Martock in the Honourable Member's constituency. It joins the eight existing special schools in Somerset. 
In addition, seven mainstream schools in Somerset have established resource provision that provide access to a mainstream curriculum and classroom alongside specialist support. Enhanced learning provisions have also been created in five mainstream secondary schools to provide informal support to young people with moderate learning difficulties as they transition from primary education. This government is committed to working with Somerset Council, school leaders and other sector partners, as well as their national counterparts, to develop and improve inclusive education within mainstream schools. The Honourable Lady mentioned the challenges around exclusion, and I appreciate the concerns. Every pupil deserves to learn in a safe, calm classroom, and we will always support our dedicated, hard-working teachers to make this happen. Schools can use sanctions as a measure to improve behaviour, in the most serious case, a suspension and permanent exclusion may be necessary to ensure that pupils are protected from disruption and can benefit from education. But our statutory guidance is very clear. In all cases, decisions to exclude a pupil must be lawful, reasonable and fair. And the guidance sets out that head teachers should consider underlying causes or contributing factors of misbehaviour before issuing an exclusion, including where a pupil has special educational needs. That should ensure appropriate support is put in place when concerns are raised about a pupil's behaviour rather than waiting for it to trigger action. The Honourable Lady also referenced the letter sent by the Secretary of State uh, by Somerset Council and uh, I thank her for, I, I thank Somerset Council to, for writing to the Secretary of State directly to set out their thoughts on the SEND system. The government recognises that for too long the education and care system hasn't met the needs of all children, with too many parents struggling to get their children the support they need and deserve. And my officials would be pleased to meet with representatives from Somerset Council who set their thoughts out very helpfully, and, and they will be in touch in due course to organise a meeting. So I want to thank the Honourable Member again for bringing this matter forward, and um, for those who've contributed and attended the debate today. Somerset SEND services, along with SEND outcomes across the country, is an issue we all care passionately about. I absolutely recognise that the SEND system needs to improve. I acknowledge the hardship that too many families face when seeking to secure the right support for their children with special educational needs and disabilities, and I am determined that this will change. But I also want to acknowledge the hard work being taken on by so many working in education, in health, in care, to support children and young people with special educational needs, both in Somerset and right across the country. I want to thank them today for their commitment and service. The question is that this House has considered SEND services in Somerset. As many as are of that opinion say aye. aye. The contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Order, order. The sitting is suspended until 4.30.